Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 272. And <clears> the <throat> topic today is the mechanics of salvation. <clears throat> what do we mean by mechanics of salvation? We want to clarify a little bit about <clears throat> what is taught, what is called the gospel of salvation. <clears throat> but we want to look at the purpose of why God commands certain things in order to bring about salvation. <clears throat> when we are instructed by hearing the Word of God, <clears throat> we're told that certain things we need to do, confess, believe, and then experience. But we don't really understand why these things are mandated. This lesson is to give us an understanding from what I believe God's perspective is <coughs> the reasoning, the rationale, so that a person understands what it means to be saved, understands the purpose for why he has to do what he has to do to become saved. We start off with the condition of the human race. Scripture teaches in his present natural state, physical man cannot detect or experience the realities of the heavens. The human race was never created to inhabit the heavens. It were created to inhabit the earth only. This has nothing to do with being fallen, sin, or righteousness. Mm. Had man never sinned, he would still not be able to enter into heaven, although he would die. Why? Turn to Genesis, the first chapter. Verse 27. <coughs> and we're going to read it down to verse 28. Genesis 1, 27 to 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God bless them. God sent unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree, yielding seed unto you it shall be for meat. <clears throat> so we see the man is given the reason for his creation. He is to be a custodian over the earth. His life, his being, everything is dependent upon the environment in which he was created, the earth. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> having said that, what we find is a diversion that comes into existence that pertains to the human race. What is this diversion? Turn to the Gospel of John, third chapter, verse 5. <clears throat>
John, the third chapter, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That means that in order for man to become an inhabitant of heaven, the heavens, he has to be changed. He has to be recreated. He has to be adapted for the heavens. In his natural state, he will never leave the environs of earth. John, third chapter, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Yeah, second, Josie, we're, we're going past. Except the man be born of water and a spirit. What, what's born of water mean? Two things. <coughs> Water regenerates. It is the water element that enables man to take on the life of a heavenly being. When Jesus died, two things poured out of him. Blood and water. The blood cleansed him, restored him back to a relationship with God so that he could become a new creation. The water regenerated him into being a new creation. This is why Jesus says you have to be born of water and of the Spirit, otherwise you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. My dream. I'm not going to bring it back up, but yeah. Turn to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, <clears throat> verse 50. 50 or Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. So what he's saying, this is not referring to the person's spiritual condition. If man never sinned, he could never ascend into the heavens. Why? Because he was never created for life in the heavens. He's created to be a, an inhabitant of the earth. Turn to 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, verse 17. <coughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What does it mean? It means that he is no longer an earth-centered being. He has now become a being, <coughs> a creation who is crafted for life in heavens. And so only the new creature can enter the heavens, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> he is a being. Well, that's why it says all things are passed away. What does it mean all things? His earth existence is passed away. Mm. <coughs> so those people who think that because they've never sinned, they've never done anything wrong, whatever. But they're not born again. They're going to heaven. Yeah, that's that. That's how they yeah. would understand. Yes, yeah. that's human thinking because mm. they're not taught differently. Mm. 
This is why I call this the mechanics of salvation. Salvation makes you a new creation. <coughs> a flawless, perfected being who now can progress in growing to become adapted to life in heaven. Turn to Galatians, the third chapter. Verse 27 and 28. Galatians 3rd chapter, 27 to 28. <coughs> For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. He's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about the new birth in which you are immersed by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. Three baptisms. Water baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism of Christ. He's talking here about the new birth, which immerses the individual into <coughs> God, making him a son of God. New creation. You're calling this the baptism of Christ? Yes. Christ baptizes the saint into the body mm. through the Spirit. <clears throat> so is it fair to say that somebody who was not baptized into the body through the Spirit could not comprehend any of these truths that we're learning? You just, you just quoted John, the third chapter. Man isn't born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. He can't comprehend it. Mm. That's why organized religion can't do what needs to be done to prepare the saint for Christ, mm. for, for, for the life of Christ in heaven. Because they don't have the understanding. <coughs> Notice what it goes on to say. <coughs> Verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. For you're all one in Christ. You lose your human identity. Yes. yes. <coughs> That's why Jesus says, <coughs> ye are not of this world. Just mm. like I'm not of this world. Mm. You no longer identify from a human perspective. What advice would you give somebody who has difficulty or considerations in not putting their attention fully in the heavens and keeping their attention somewhat on the earth. I give them these scriptures and tell them to concentrate on these scriptures. Make them yours. That breaks the hold of the earth uh, persona, the earth attraction within the life of the individual because you're shifting your focus away from your identity. Colossians, third chapter, verse 1 to 3. <coughs> if you then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above, mm -hmm. where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For, or because, ye are dead. What does that mean? You're dead to the things of earth. You're no longer to identify with a human uh, uh, identity. There's no longer male, female, black, white, <coughs> Uh, rich, poor, you don't identify with thi those things that are passed away. All things are passed away. All things are now new. So the scripture is telling the individual, now you have to begin 
to comprehend the new creation perspective. You have to begin to identify with what God has made you, a new creation. That's what it goes on to say. Verse 10, chapter 3. And to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. I'm going to repeat that. <clears throat> and to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You identify <coughs> as a new creation. If a person <coughs> truly desires this, they'll free themselves up off the shackles yes. of this pseudo-reality, which is purposeless in a, in a person's life. Because it's not going to take the individual into any degree of achievement, progress. It's only going to allow him to go in circles, consistently traveling, doing the same thing over and over and over. Same problems, same trials, same stuff, because the individual is like the little, the little squirrel on the, the wheel. Mm -hmm. He's just going in circles. That's what the enemy wants. Right. We know that these things are true since the Father wants sons. Yes. He's not going to want sons and then not allow uh, a way for it to, to come about. That's, that's ludicrous. No. He also, since he allows anybody who is earnestly, truly searching for him, brings about the conditions through the Holy Spirit where that person can receive understanding. So, yes. So since that's true, when the person who is trying to move from earthly identity to heavenly identity encounters that restriction, let me use that term, the only thing that person needs to do is follow the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this is what the scripture is telling us. If an individual, the key, the key, the key, Paul talks about it right here. Verse 5, mortify, put to death, therefore your members which are upon the earth. Again, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Put to death those things that are keeping you attached to the earth. Mm. If you can do that, then you will begin to be aware of desires that come forth automatically within you. Desires that are totally opposite to the desires you used to have because of the desires of the new creation. The desires to live on earth the way life is lived in the heavens. And that, that desire will lift you up above and put you on a higher level than the mundane level of exactly. the fallen human race that's struggling here on earth. This is when the Father has designed it to operate in the life of a Christian. The problem is, the problem is, 99.99 tenths of Christians <coughs> can't get off the earth. They allow themselves to be stuck here. The problems, the trials, the belief system is all earth-centered. Yes. So they never come into a point where they begin to <clears throat> experience the real them, the real being that's been created and born into the family of God. Mm. They never begin to receive the understanding of true sonship. Number one, they're not taught. Number two, they don't read. They're following <coughs> uh, a human-centered concept of Christianity. Mm. Thinking about, what well, can I lose my salvation? Uh, what, what, do I need to get baptized again? Or what church do I need? That stuff is superfluous. It has nothing to do with the command structure of the gospel. 
This is the struggling, this is the imposition of ignorant humans who are substituting things of men for the doctrines of Christ. Okay, so uh, just going back to uh, verse 10, and when you put on a new man, mm -hmm. does that mean that you're born again? Yes. Okay, it it means, on. it means, picture metamorphosis. You have a caterpillar. You know what happens with a caterpillar? It turns yes. into a butterfly. There's a transformation that takes place in which a new creation, a new creature is being developed within the old creature. When the old creature dies, and the body decays, the new creature, the butterfly, emerges and it begins to ascend into the realm for which it was created. This is a sample of what's happening in the new birth. You have the old outer, you have the new inner, which is developing. If it's allowed to develop, it will mature to its fullness. But if its development is interfered with, it will not achieve the purpose for which it was designed. The enemy is consistently trying to get the development of the inner stopped, slowed down, or destroyed any way he can by keeping the individual ignorant of who he is. <clears throat> what we find here <clears throat> if we take a look at what's being said and we can identify with what's being said then we will <clears throat> be on our way to achieving what we have been designed to manifest. Turn to 2 Corinthians 4th chapter verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4th chapter verse 16. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, the old man is dying. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The in man, inward man is an eternal being. The outward man is temporary. And it's going to reach a point where it dies, becomes totally incapable of manifestations. <coughs> Should we understand <coughs> renewed to mean growth? No. <coughs> growth comes from a uh, from application of the renewing process. But the renewing process is not growth. The re renewing process is eternality. It is the progress in which you exist. Okay. So Remember we read in Colossians, made in the image of his creator. God the Father is renewed. The Son is renewed. Okay. We are renewed. <clears throat> that's where e eternality comes into being. What is it that's being renewed? <clears throat> you are a being of light. Hmm. Your light source, which is your life is being renewed day by day. The way you explained it just now makes the term more abundant life. Mm -hmm. It's not it's just eternal life. It's abundant eternal life, not exist, not non-ending. Because, because yes. of the renewal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Where do we find any verses on the renewal? Just so I can mark them down and read them later. Um, 
turn to, let me see here. Well, Colossians third chapter, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 4.16 There was another one Where does Jesus say I come that they may have life? Oh that's John about the 10th chapter But I think what he wants is the renewing process mm -hmm. <clears throat> Now what we can find is what it is that's being renewed <coughs> We're creatures of light on the inside that is consistently a everlasting, immortal, eternal. Yes. We are a creature of light because we are born again. Yes. Were we a creature of light before we were born again? No. Okay. No. Mm. The man was made of matter. Pure matter. Mm. Now turn to um, Colossians first chapter. Verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Made us fit to be partakers through the new birth we become acclimated for life in the heavens immediately if you were born again and you died immediately after that you go to heaven <coughs> what we're here to do is to develop to the position that we have been called to in heaven that means the scripture talks about renewed Colossians third chapter in the knowledge of God. <coughs> it is the knowledge of God <coughs> through the Word of God and the direction of the Holy Spirit of God that enables us enables us to mature to the level in which God has designed us to function. That's why you start off as a babe. You mature to the state of maturity. <clears throat> what does that mean? That means you're light. You're being of light. You start off at a level of light. As you apply the renewing process, your light becomes brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Now, having said that, <clears throat> Scripture teaches the saint is to surround his life with godly things on the outside as the spirit man dwells in light on the inside. And he will always have the favor of God. <clears throat> we are to seek light on the outside as well as manifest light on the inside. Turn, First John, first chapter, verse seven. But if we walk in the light, but if we walk in the light, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. What does this mean? <coughs> 
as we are progressing and growing in light, the wisdom of God, as we live righteously, you're going to overcome the, the flaws, the corruption of your outer man. We still sin. You still have intellect that's not been <clears throat> uh, 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 glorified, purified. The glory, the purity, the godliness is all on the inside, not on the outside. But as you take control through obedience to the Holy Spirit, your light gets brighter. Your life is imbued in light on the outside as well as the inside. If you sin, something happens. You say something, you do something. It's not becoming to God immediately. The blood erases it. Amen. And you Praise keep on Lord. walking unrestricted because you have favor with God. Mm. John is talking about this. That's why he's he's encouraging. He's emphasizing righteous living because you're a being of light. And as you maintain a life of light, there's a balance. You're allowing your inner man to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. But, if an individual <clears throat> encounters darkness on a continuous scale, then what happens is that darkness translates into his inner being. If you could see yourself, you'd see yourself as a glorious being surrounded, <clears throat> clothed with a robe of light. That's where you're created. As you engage with things, as you come in contact with the things of darkness, and you maintain contact, with those things of darkness, that darkness translates into your inner being and your robe becomes spotted. Watch dark spots on it. <clears throat> to a point where it affects your whole walk. Turn to Revelation, 7th chapter. Starting in verse 9. <clears throat> After this I beheld in low a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing, glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They missed the rapture because their robes were spotted. Christians are compromised. <coughs> Christians that maintain contact with the things of darkness are spotting their robes. Ain't going to make it. The scripture tells us the Lord's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. That means purity. You have got to be a being totally of light, unblemished. Now, what happens if the robe gets not only spotted, it goes on beyond that. Turn to Revelation 3rd chapter. <clears throat> Starting at 
starting verse 14. <clears throat> and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, and faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. This is a Christian who walks in compromise. His commitment is no commitment. Why? goes on. Because thou sayest I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind and naked. Does that mean that this this is a nudist colony? People are walking around, you know, Lord said, put some clothes on. No. He's talking about they have no longer any robes. Their robes are not only spotted, their robes are destroyed. Because they're earthly. <coughs> Why? Because of their covetousness. Mm. They're after wealth. They're after material things, <clears throat> which has destroyed their spiritual covering. So then we see that they've never accepted Colossians 3, verse 1. No. Putting their oh. attention on the things of the heavens. That's right. They've been attached to the earth. Not only attached to the earth, they have the, the basic, basically connected totally mm. to the earth. Mm. And they've destroyed their spiritual makeup. The Lord says, I see you. I see your condition. You make me sick. But what you've done. You look at the body. Of, there's a word. Pretender. Yes. Absolutely. They're destroying their, their spiritual covering. If they if ever had one, and these people are ignorant of their spiritual condition, because they have been developing, they have been um, <clears throat> nurturing the outer, old, corrupted, material, human aspect, and they've destroyed the spiritual. They've been born again because mm. he calls them a church, mm. but they are totally neutralized. They. They, they're uh, basically the way they're going. They're just connected. So what happens? The Lord is going to judge this church. He's going to sever the connected and they're down to hell. So are they... Do you want to ask? No, I'll say okay. <coughs> Are they... You said they're ignorant of their spiritual um, condition. Yes. Are they truly ignorant of that? Or are they pretending they're not pretending? No. They're ignorant of it. Mr. Jones, I... When you're saying what you're saying, the, the covering is destroyed. Mm. Okay, I saw a certain person when you said this, and I saw a, a skeleton. Mm. Mm. Just bones. Mm. That's With it. it. Just a skeleton, no yes. covering. Yes. That was what he said, 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not, they don't know, mm. that thou art yes. wretched and yes. miserable and poor and blind and naked. What they've done to their spiritual makeup. The new man is wretched, he's wiped out, they've destroyed him. So you could say that this is the <coughs> extreme end of failing to get off the earth and into the heavens. Sure. That, that's, that's the result of... Sure doing that. They have strengthened the earthly carnal desires mm. which kill the spiritual desires. Jesus said, uh, Paul says, <clears throat> you walk after the flesh, ye shall die. You're going to kill the spirit man. Walk in the spirit, the carnal man dies. Mm. One of the two have got to die. These guys are flourishing in the material, oh, I'm rich, I'm kicking back, you know, I don't need anything. They're so far out now that they, they're totally ignorant of their true condition. They have neutralized their awareness of their true being, 
spirit man is dwelling within. They literally put, put, put themselves to death. The only hope that these people have is martyrdom. Turn to Revelation, <clears throat> sixth chapter. Starting in verse 9. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held. Notice they're under the altar. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And what? White robes were given unto every one of them. It was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. The reason they were under the altar is because they had destroyed their robes. They had no covering. <clears throat> so they come up before the Father naked. And the Father doesn't countenance disrobed people coming up in His presence. So the altar consecrates them. But they can't go out beyond the altar because they don't have any covering. So white robes have to be given to them. What we see here in these, these passages of Scripture is life as it's lived in heaven. The consequences of what a person does if he's born again to destroy himself and the life that he could have had in heaven. Yes. Who gives them the second, the second white robe? Angels. Are dispatched to uh, give them a covering. Okay, so I'm seeing this second robe is the, same, the, the point I'm bringing up. Similar to the second set of the, the, the law, you know, the, they were broken, so the second set has to, you know, replace the first set. Mm -hmm. um, so the second covering that they're, they're getting, is it the same as the first one that they destroyed? Mm-hmm, yeah. It's fine. Right. It's, it, it, it's, it is a... <coughs> Uh, a fabric which is constructed in heaven to cover them. A direct replacement? Yes. Not greater than or less than? No. Okay. It's equivalent to what they have done to merit it. They've, they've martyred them, th themselves. So that is basically, what that is, is a minimum requirement to enter in now into sure. heaven. Sure, sure. You wouldn't lay it all down before now. You better lay it all down, otherwise... <clears throat> otherwise you don't even live on the new earth? You go to hell. Yeah. Mm. So we see, life and eternity is light. We are creatures of, of light. Everything that you do is light. Now I want to give you an example of a preparation that is given to the individual who allows his inner man, the feelings of his inner man, to dominate the outer. What God <coughs> has pro provided. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5th chapter. As you're turning, Scripture teaches, because he is now a son, because he is now a son, the Father has designed for him a permanent region in the heavens. This region manifests <coughs> many characteristics. <coughs> this region manifests many characteristics. Second Corinthians, fifth chapter, verse one. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So it manifests the characteristic of an abode, a dwelling. 
it also manifests characteristic of a vast estate. Turn to 1 Peter, 1st chapter, verse 4. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. <clears throat> so he makes you like this to a vast estate, a region in which <clears throat> you are going to reside. Paul likens it to a dwelling in which you're going to reside. Now it also takes on other characteristics. Let me ask you a quick question here. Yes. Is the implication that each person resides on their own estate? That's the first part. For pillar angels and temple angels. No, it has nothing to do with pillar angels and temporal angels. This is talking about this is prior to the glorification. This is the inheritance of the okay. Father. You're talking about the inheritance in the sun. Right. So <coughs> those who have passed away before the glorification are enjoying their estates. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> now it also manifests other <coughs> characteristics. Turn back to 2 Corinthians 5th chapter. Verse 2. For in this we groan or sigh, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven. <clears throat> now, this is not desiring to ascend into the heavens. This is desiring <clears throat> to be covered with the house which is coming from heaven down to earth. What does that mean? It means, remember, everything is in the element of light. It means that your estate, your dwelling, <coughs> consists of light element. The light element has characteristics within it can, which can extend down to you on earth and envelop you. Because it's your inheritance. You already have it. Mm. It can extend the conditions which exist in the heavens into your life here on earth. How does a person here on earth um, generate that appearance, that manifestation of their heavenly estate? <clears throat> Mainly, we said it before, you mortify the, the, the desires of the carnal, the physical, the human, and immediately you will begin to detect desires of this. What do you already you you guys already have desires? That's why you've committed. Mm. It's just that you become more and more aware of specific desires. It becomes greater and greater and greater. I'm linking this to <coughs> situations where certain people feel themselves being yes elevated, ascending. That's it. So. Um, I was tripped up when you said it doesn't mean that the estate sorry, that the person ascends to the estate the estate uh, drops down to the person the, the, the spirit desires that's one desire Okay. That, why it's here because it's miserable in this, this corrupted body yes of course the conditions of this body make it miserable but it desires to have the conditions for which it was created descend to cover it but what you're saying is also a desire. Turn to Philippians, first chapter. Verse 
first 22 24 But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what I shall choose, choose, I what not. Paul is talking about a sovereign act of the will, making a choice. For I am in a strait betwixt two, <clears throat> having a desire, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul says, to live is Christ, to die is gain. He understands. And he has the ability at this point. He's developed to the point in which he can will himself to disconnect and ascend to his house in heaven and totally be disconnected from the earth because he is dominated by the Spirit fully identifies as a being of light. Is he in the heavens of heavens if he does that? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. He's going to be in the primary creation. He's not going to have anything to do with the secondary sure. creation. Sure. <coughs> <coughs> so we see the Father. Matter of fact, turn back to 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter. And you can see for yourself, this is what the Father's planned. But because organized religion doesn't understand it, it's not taught. Verse 5, 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verse 5. Now he that hath wrought, word wrought there means ordained, us for the self same thing is God talk about the Father who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit <clears throat> therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident I say willing 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 Rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That's a desire. That's automatic. Once you become aware of that, <coughs> the fullest, the essence and the quintessence of your desire, if you allow it, is to always be fully in the presence of the Lord. Nothing less. You desire, you live, you des you breathe wanting to be with him mm. that's the design of the father for the sons <clears throat> 